it's an elf off. Yeah, Harry's a good coach, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I I don't specifically remember playing against Harry. I just, I'm pretty sure that they um, are one of the chalice qualifiers. Uh, they've definitely got a lot more games on their team than we do, which is why they've got tackle, which we do not have. And they've got some diving tackle, which is also really nice against us. So that looks like a random. Um, I think they've paid full price for this. Not too many other skills, but definitely with the tackle, it's a skills advantage, especially because we are playing one reroll Wood Elves with one War Dance of this game. This is going to be very tough. I think this is probably going to be a loss, but we'll give it our best go. We do have Mighty Blow, so maybe if we can get that rolling, we'll, uh, we'll get somewhere. And we've got the most annoying amount of inducement money, which is 95,000, which is not enough to buy anything useful because I would buy a second reroll in a heartbeat if I could. Um... But instead, I guess we get a keg and two assistant coaches and hope those might help us get a reroll. Mm. Also, hello to anyone else I haven't said hello to. Uh, hey, Akainza. Hey, Senor, Senor Lombard. Are you still going in um, Chalice, Senor Lombard? Uh, hey, Shirato. Hey, my chicken chaser who says, this guy just beat me up bad the other day. Uh-oh. Um, anyone else I've missed and not said hello to? Uh, ooh. Interesting choices. Normally I would kick first to Dark Elves. I'm just wondering if I'd change that because of the Mighty Bow, but I think no. I think we'd still rather play some defense first. See if we can make life difficult for them on defense. Uh, we have literally two positionals, which is hilarious and a bit bad. I'm going to turn the skills on because I want to see the loners. If I can remember how to turn the skills on. Yeah, because... Not knowing loners is like my major pet peeve in this game. If you don't have the skills showing, you don't see your loners. And that has caused me many times now to stuff things up, which really sinks. Oh, they have a witch elf, so we will not set up like this. Reconsider that quickly. Very nearly just handed out a free serve. Where is, I'm pretty sure one of our linemen has four SPP from the MVP, yeah, Cricketer kids. They might as well be one of the ones we protect. All right, let's go with that. Hey, Tokamada. Uh, good luck, Shirato, for your meeting. Tokamada, I saw you were asking for a practice game on Fumble the other day, by the way. I think yesterday, and I couldn't do it, but I'd love to get practice games in sometime. Because uh, with Nafsi coming up and banging every chicken ball, I'd, I'd love to do some. So if you have other times you want them. I'd definitely love to do some tournament practices. Um, Dosia, a question from the other day. I've got... Sorry, I'm really distracted. Hendy, um, NAFC roster is the 12th, right? We're not like in panic time yet, right? Today's the 2nd. Please tell me it's the 12th and I don't have to pick my roster today, otherwise I'll panic. Um, I've got a Lizardman team in local league, got block on the first Taurus, but not allowed to select the same skill combo on the same positional. Oh, interesting rules. Not allowed to pick the same... That's quite bad for Lizards, that rule set. Um... So you're not allowed to have any more block lists at all? That seems really rough. Um, if uh, if you're not allowed any more block, I would probably take a guard one. Guard's quite good, but other people have played more lizards than me. But I, I think one guard's probably still definitely worth having. Hey, Spleggy. I do have until the 12th, good. Oh, I see. So the order you get them in matters. In that case, you could definitely make a case for doing Mighty Blow because you get them to exactly what JD White just said. There you go. Exactly what JD White just said. So it looks like we're going to take a loner block on the tree here, which is an interesting gamble. They have got the ball very safe, to be fair. They're, yeah, they're taking some risks here if they don't get this down. Oh, they're not. Yeah, OK. That's just coming in there to block. I always say in leagues as well, it depends like, oh, of course they got it down. Of course they got it down. 
Lona block. Was was there ever any doubt? Um, I uh, yeah, I think in leagues it's also always the thinking who are you playing next? Like, what's your next opponent? Or what your next few opponents are? But but oh wow, they're going to foul the tree. She has got fixed girls, so that's not generally a good foul, especially with no bribes. But this is the fight they want. So fair enough. Don't genuinely recommend that strategy without dirty player or sneaky yet, but no doubt they're about to kill the tree and get lucky. Because that's generally how things go when you watch some, someone doing something and think that doesn't seem like such a good strategy normally. What that means is it's about to work. Give ourselves the extra hit there to get the knockdown. And now that we've got it, let's put some forward pressure on the ball. Yeah, it seems like a really tough rule for lizards specifically. I think there are lots of races that won't mind that as much as lizards do. Okay, they're going to want to bring at least one back to close this cage before fouling again. Or maybe not. Maybe they'll just foul first and risk it. Uh, last game we did. So I don't know when you were last here, Dukes. We, our original Wood Elf team, we decided we'd had enough of. We thought we'd restart and try some different things. This time we've gone Mighty Bow Fast on a wall answer, which is Collie, who got there in just three games, which is quite impressive going. But we all know that Collie likes some violence. So uh, the block tree is, yeah, the block tree is gone because we restarted. Yeah, I was a bit worried they'd go for that block. Fortunately, they do not get the um, murder on it. So that is okay. And now we can get some hits back. Question is just how we order them and prioritize. Let's see if you can get up first, because there's no risk on that. So we've taken root and we're not getting up. Well, at least we burned a snake. Let's say that much. I think let's bring the forward pressure then and let them hang out back here. Not, not getting the high rolls we were hoping for here, which is the thing with high rolls. You won't always get them, but would have been helpful for sure. Oh, don't you dare. A lot of ones that turn, my goodness. There was a snake on the take root stand up, there was a snake on that armor roll, and there was a snake on that dodge and then AV, AV roll. So that was not a, not a turn where there were many good things that could happen. <laughs> Salut, Michael Exio. Yes, we chose Mighty Blow. Wait, JD Whitey, this, this team is like the last team, I suppose. Um, it's an experiment because uh, this ladder is not very kind to Wood Elves. The ladder format doesn't suit them. The 16 million uh, TV, the 1.6 million TV cap doesn't suit them. There's lots about this setup that doesn't really suit them very well. Um, so I'm trying different things. I didn't do this last time, but um, last time when I was playing Wood Elves, I did think to myself, 
it really seemed like the teams that were succeeding with Wood Elves all had the Mighty Bow Award answer, so I thought I'll try it and see if we can uh, see if we do better. If not, then, then we've learned something. Uh, yes, now that, that tree has rooted without standing up, um, it can still stand up, but it can't move. So the only the only way that tree is getting unrooted is if they block it down again, which um, I can't imagine them doing. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, that's there. I was wondering where that block even came from. Okay, yeah, fair enough. They did not leave anyone to foul it with, luckily for me. Um, but we probably do have to prioritise trying to free that up. Because I would foul it if I was them later, and they've already shown they're quite aggressive on the fouls. So... Nice. So loners, they can't have her that. that just because it's going to get fouled. I don't really want to reroll it. Just thinking about things that need to happen. I had a different plan for this turn that has not really come to fruition. Uh, if I hit that there, let me get the one dice bits coming this way. I think we just got to go for the dodge now. I don't love, but it is what it is. And we snaked it. No, oh, I didn't sneak it. We already wanted to. Ugh. Well, we got a nice removal, but we're about to lose our ward answer. So, not a good turn overall. It's pretty much an auto apothecary um, in this game. It's the only thing with the ward answer. Like, pretty much any removal, we're going to apothecary because what else are we using the apothecary for? I'm all for the private leagues. I, it's tricky though, Christopher, because I'm I'm sort of I'm on a funny schedule. So obviously I signed up to Rebel. I like Rebel because I can play in the Aussie uh, conference, and that suits my weird schedule. But committing to lots of leagues means committing to lots of scheduling, which isn't always straightforward. Oh, one dice, spicy one dice, and rolls a skull. Not sure why that was a one dice. I feel like you could have made that a two dice quite easily. I guess we're blitzing the catcher. One reroll left, you're not going to spend it, okay. Hey, Otter! Nice there. There's one player left you can go and foul the ward answer, which I still assume is happening. They've got to dodge to do it, and they'll get one assist. Yeah, I would do that. Does not kill it. So now, number one priority for this turn is try to go and provide some support to that ward answer. Good. 
Oh my god. So many one in nines. One reroll life is hard life. We did say after the last game, I was really like torn between buying the um, second reroll or rebuying the catcher because we had a catcher die in the first three games. We went with the catcher. Um, it's a tough decision. The catcher, if it doesn't die here, is quite useful on offense. It's the main reason we went for it, but uh, definitely a second reroll. I mean, the problem is we probably need more, <laughs> more than one more reroll the way this has gone, but a second reroll would certainly have been welcome here, put it that way. We have failed a lot of dice in these first uh, four turns. And they are leading to a lot of things getting punched. Hey, Persia. Uh, Ritzkamesh, um, it really depends what kind of tabletop we're talking about. Um, I think when it comes to tournament play, agility is just fine. Um, I think that comes down then to uh, tournament rule sets and what specifically the organisers of each tournament, tournament do. Um, but uh, um, I would also say that, yeah, what Christopher says in, uh, in leagues, tabletop t TV doesn't normally reach such high numbers and... Um, Redraft also caps it. So I'm playing in a league, a sort of normal tabletop league where I live. And uh, we have redraft. We don't have any caps on the redraft, I don't think. But there's just like the normal redraft rules done every season. And there's not really any teams above like 1.35 million, like 1.4 million. And there are some teams there that are three seasons old, I think now. So it has like a natural capping system, which the ladder doesn't use. Um, I, the rules are definitely less favourable to agility than they used to be. Like everyone has joked about how these rules were written by a dwarf coach, and I think that's not entirely untrue, right? Like these rules are very favourable for bash. They're very favourable for killing. They've given these, um, these, uh, all these buffs to fouling, and uh, and other things. But um, but definitely, wood elves are better suited to other formats that aren't this one. Okay, well, that hasn't gone great, but it has finally let us get our player up. Oh, it has actually given them a KO. So we finally got our war dancer able to get up and do a blitz, which is a relief. I thought that was going to get fouled again, but it didn't. Uh, probably should stand that up just in case. There you go, let's burn another one on that. So if we double skull now, it's three ones in a row. <laughs> let's hope it doesn't. No, we found some powers. Um, found an armor break, which is nice. Uh, hype. Thanks for the game last night, hype. I am sorry for the fouling, but I felt like I was so far behind with all those uh, removals you were getting that I had to, I had to go for those plays, which didn't work out for me anyway. So uh, they've got diving tackle here, so these dodges are going to be a pain. So probably we aren't doing them. Still got the bribe. Gonna keep on going. Probably we're doing that instead. Good. Uh, might as well stay. Is it even worth doing this dodge off tackle? Not certain it is. But yeah, thanks for the game, Hype, and well played in that game last night as well. The old lead designer was a dwarf coach, genuinely, yeah. A dwarf coach would have kept piling on. I don't know, maybe the dwarf coach was sick of being piled onto by chaos. Piling on wasn't as good for dwarfs, right? Because they're only movement four. Piling on was better for the teams that had more movement. Just 
So we're down one player right now, but they're down two. They are getting a lot of blocks, which is not ideal. There's many things about this half that haven't been ideal, though. We failed a lot of dice at the beginning of this drive, and we've never really recovered from that. One re-roll life. One re-roll and one war dancer life. This is always going to be a tough game. We did say that from the start. Stop hurting the nice dark elves. If they would leave me alone, I'd stop hurting them. I didn't ask them to come bother me like this. Yeah, I saw that one. It did the glitch, which tells you it's about to go. So now we're nine on nine. That is a... Oh, Lyman with a niggle. Sorry, Chris Frozen. That is not getting an apo. Dead, 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 as Mr. P would say. Right. More nice pals. Very nice removal. Won't dodge that because the diving tackle won't dodge this. Maybe it's time to try and dodge that. We do have a keg, so at least we've got a slightly better chance of getting our 1k back, but... Coming around for the catcher, I wonder if they would. Last reroll. Spend it and snake, we'd love to see that. Can we hit the ball here? We can, it's going to be a rush, but we'll try. No, we won't. We'll borrow a double skull. No, absolutely not. Okay, so that's just the game. <laughs> that's just the game. At least she's not dead. But that's the game and probably the next game because next game we will again have to play on one more answer. Mm. That's a frustrating outcome. Mm. That makes the next half an hour fairly pointless. But what can you do? You can cry. <laughs> and they got all the kids back. Yeah, it's going to be a very pointless second half. It's going to be a very, very pointless second half. Oh well. Blood bowl. Blood bowl things. It does really feel like that for me, Christopher. <laughs> I don't know how, when I see other people playing Wood Elves, it, they manage not to have it happen. I don't feel like I'm being reckless with them. You know, taking two dice blocks is kind of a thing you have to do with them. But... Yeah, exactly. The first game.
anyway, at least it wasn't a perm. At least it did downgrade to like a genuine, like non-lasting injury, right? It's not a serious, it's not a niggle. It's just a, it's just an MNG. So could be worse. Rubbish for this game, but this game was an uphill game from the beginning. I mean, we're playing a team that's played more than twice as many games as us that has way more useful skills than us and development. Um, but you sort of hope in a game like that that maybe the dice will not help your opponent further. <laughs> um, they have left on the one turn, so we'll try it, even though it's going to be difficult without uh, re-rolls or a thrower. Have to do the first push off the line. Where in No, I don't think it works, sadly. Definitely not happy with that kick. Uh, is it even worth trying? It's just like a straight six, we have to roll. I think it's actually better to go for just damage at that point. Kick's too bad to make this realistic. See if we can make any more removals that stick. Oh my god, stop rotting snakes. Between skulls and snakes, I reckon we're up to about six or seven and eight turns now. Because we had like two on one turn because of the tree rolling a snake and then an actual snake run after and we failed the and we failed the three plus ko and they made the four plus ko just to really rub that in oh no we didn't that was just an animation bug okay so we did make the ko but yeah <laughs> let alone sixes we're finding rolling twos quite a challenge so far mm -mm. Had to play a 40k Masters Undead down 400k TV, beat him, and I've been rewarded by playing another Undead team, only 200k TV down. Wow. Yeah, that's quite brutal. I mean, there's really no way. There's really no way this ends well. If we can score a touchdown and lose 2 1, I think that's our best outcome because at least we get 10,000 more. Um, we get 10,000 more money that way, so I'll probably just try and score if there's any chance to, but I think even that's going to be quite hard because we have one reroll and one positional. <laughs> um, could give it to the tree for maximum hilarity. Tree for maximum hilarity. Tree for maximum hilarity. In which roots immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Called it. Is it okay? Tree can still hand it off later. Hey, Hagen.
<laughs> so, Shepard holding the ball. I mean, I guess we just sort of hold it until turn, I don't know, somewhere late in the half and then try to hand it off if we have enough left players left to try to hand off to. <laughs> my ball. Oh my god, that is my favourite of the new gnome rules, is my ball, just because that is like... I like I like good thematic rules. I feel like that's a good thematic rule. Because I know a dog like that. We haven't talked about gnomes yet. We should talk about gnomes. I think they look fun. I... I, you know, I'll reserve judgment on things. I, I definitely understand why some people are anxious about an Agi 2 plus stunty runner. Like starting with those skills is pretty crazy. Um, but I, I'm not convinced they're to be feared. They're still a Sunty team. And they don't have like the amazing gimmick part of say, um, the chef apparently. They don't get the Halfling Master Chef. Let's we'll see if we can give the uh, tree a chance to murderize the switch off. Probably won't work, but you know what? It's fun. Didn't work. Boo. Ah, oh, we rolled these in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. Diving tackle is well positioned here. Pretty much have to start with the one nice. That then does give us some two dice afterwards. Nice. Sadly, we have given them free hit on the catcher in our pursuit of murdering a witch elf. Terribly, Dukes. Absolutely terribly. <laughs> We're going to lose. We uh, had our ward answer die to a double skull and uh, it was already a pretty rotten matchup to begin with, um, given uh, we uh, only had one ward answer and one reroll and our opponent has played like twice as many games. Um, but the true we got a touch back and we thought since this is going terribly anyway what would the funniest be thing be to do and i decided that the funniest thing to do would be to give the ball the tree the tree the ball and uh the tree then rooted on its first attempt uh it did die die but we did apo it to, to a miss next game so at least it's coming back but it was dead dead My ball, exactly. Yeah, that's what I think, Shepard. Like, like on a Sunday team, mess around with things a bit, see what happens. Like, I, I definitely get like how strong people could look at like some of those rules and be like, "Wow, illusionist is so strong," and jump up and wrestle is so strong. And like, yeah, but they are still strength two and armor seven plus. <laughs> like, they're still going to get um, pulverized, right? Like, bash teams are still going to murder them. Elf teams are still going to run around them. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced they're like this juggernaut that everyone needs to to be terrified of. I think they, I'm really hopeful that they're just like going to strike the right balance of like being fun, basically, which is what we want in our stunty teams, I think. Of course, I may well be wrong and have been wrong before. Maybe that'll turn out to be way too good because <laughs> I'm wrong all the time. I want my opponent to get punished for all this basing with something actually getting removed. Because they are basing a lot.
yeah, it's definitely not as annoying as swarming. Definitely not as swarming as swarming. Yeah, the tree rooted on the first block, I kind of say. First action it blocked. We've rolled so many ones in this game. <laughs> We've rolled a genuinely crazy number of ones. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we were not far off a snake per turn in that first half when you add them up. I think pre-order's already on for the gnomes, isn't it? I think Dizzy said she's already pre-ordered them. I have some vouchers for uh, Chaos Cards, which is a store, um, because I won them when our team won the Kent Team Championship. So I'm planning to get them then from there. But yeah, they may, they may sell out quickly. I think they're going to be very popular, definitely. Mm, this isn't looking great. Opponents like played well. Like opponents done smart things. I'm not knocking my opponent when I see a dice spin rough. They've played. They've made good decisions there. I think they've been a little lucky with how aggressive they've been basing some things up. But uh, they uh, they're using their positioning well to to lock this up to give themselves that advantage of forcing me to throw a bad dice without a reroll. Because uh, here I think I'm going to have a hard time not doing either a dodge to start off or a one dice block. I'd like to do is push this onto the tree so the tree can do something and get a block. But the, di the diving tackle, I mean, this again, I'm saying they're playing well, and they are. But also they have a blodge tackle piece and a, mi and a diving tackle piece. Because we double sculled our way into the injury box with our only skilled player, we have basic elves playing against this, which is actually really hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are using what they have well. I think we've got a one dice again. Mm, I think we might have to eat it. Mm. No, can't chain player that's rooted. Rooted player is uh is out of service. Going for the surf on Ode, but won't get it because they rolled a pal. Hi, Rackies. Yeah, sudden life is. We're not having much of a game. Uh, it's uh, going to be a loss for me, but I would say also a loss for the Blood Bowl three matchmaker. This one, um, but uh, we got a touch back, and we thought it'd be funny to give the ball to the tree, so we did. And then they rooted immediately. So, so the tree's just hanging out with the ball. Probably just going to end up staying there until turn 16. <laughs> there was, you know, originally hope that we might hand it off, but that's not looking very likely anytime soon. What's their passing stat? Five plus. <laughs> that's not looking too likely either. Uh, well, stand that up and we'll get the block there. Stand. 
quite dodgy there and do this block first because I think I actually like just need to have that catcher back somewhere useful. That was good. Find blitz here as well. That's good. Mm, why did you give the ball to the tree? Because the game was hopeless and I thought it would be funny. <laughs> we were in a hopeless position. The matchup was a nine game old team with lots of skills against a three game old team that's missing a war dancer already. We then rolled lots and lots of ones and our war dancer, uh, so our only skilled player, um, murdered itself and so we needed many miracles to have any chance in this game and so we thought rather than worry too much about it we'd give it to the tree and see what happened and what happened was the tree took root right away so yeah <laughs> I'll hand it off at some point although we're running out of time to do it to be honest Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I see a tree in a cage. <laughs> that's actually what we're planning to try for, Sudden Life. Um, that's exactly what we're, the plan is on the tree, is to save up enough SPP to get it movement. So, eventually we'd like to do that. That's smart. So we could try and hand off this turn, right? Like we've got someone to hand off to. We've just not really got anywhere to go with it. Like we have to do a mad dash through this gap. I mean, maybe it's the best chance we're going to get. I don't know. Is there any way we'd make it around this side with a lot of rushes maybe? I think maybe we have to spend it this turn just because if we don't we're really not gonna have any hope it's it's pretty hopeless regardless but i think maybe we have to do it now because at least if we make this we're well, at least we're at least pretending we can do something right like we're pushing up this side and saying hey look we have a threat it's a pretty tepid threat but it's a threat Got that out, so that's now able to receive the ball next turn, maybe. Um, do trees still get passing skill access? Uh, on a secondary, yes. Mm -mm. Thanks for the follow, Paltzamarak. Going for the push is not the knockdown. Gets the knockdown second time, fair enough. Little bit greedy, but it worked. Cannoneer next skill. What does strong arm actually do now? I think it only works for throw teammates, right? Yeah, so the strong arm doesn't help it if it wants to throw the ball. Which sadly, Wood Elves don't have any throwable teammates. Give trees a gnome. That's what, sorry, give Wood Elves a gnome. I want a Wood Elf gnome. Mm 
Mm. A wood elf gnome, ideally. Um, obviously, you know, a goose would be great too. If a tree does a multi-block, it does a double whirlwind, at which point it twists around that much. There is a bug in Blood Bowl 3 that the player twists its rooted stage right off. You're making that up, Andy Davo. And hi, Andy, how are you? All right, so this is turn 15 coming up. We're going to throw some dice. They're not likely to work, but we're going to throw them and see if we can pull off a miracle. We obviously have to hand the ball off. It's a bit of a shame because I'd like to punch this, but we have to hand the ball off. That was such a good handoff animation. Oh my God, I wish I'd zoomed in. It was like an overarm throw to give the ball here. Um, and I think then we just got to leg it up this side, don't we? And hope that somehow we don't get in trouble. I mean, we're, we're going to get in trouble, but I think we just have to sort of pray. <laughs> Let me move that first so it's in scoring range. And then this is our blitz. Again, there's no safe actions because we have no skills. We have a completely basic lineman team with no rerolls. But that's a pow, which is good. Uh, we don't want to leave it next to the ball carrier, so we'll push it that way. I think we've got to take this block before moving the thing. But the problem is at the moment, if we fail this, we are getting served. So don't fail it is the key to that. Nice stern. We can still go for the serve. So we're just going to try to make it not great. Two plus, followed by a five plus. If we go here, that's a little bit more awkward. Um, they've got diving tackle here, so maybe try the one nice and see if we can dodge that one out. Can't make the one nice. Well, we have a scoring threat. Which is more than I thought I was going to get, frankly. <laughs> it's not a good scoring threat. I would bet against it succeeding. But um, but it is a scoring threat. Obviously, I'm making that up as if I'm... <laughs> the thing is, Andy, I didn't believe that you would give a tree multi-block. But there are enough bugs in this game that I could have believed that as a bug. <laughs> There are enough bugs that I could believe it was a bug. Uh, Andy, what was going on is um, we had a classic Bud Bowl 3 spin from uh, my three-game-old team into a nine-game-old team with a lot of useful skills. And uh, my three-game-old team was down a war dancer and the other war dancer double skulled itself to death in the first half. So we're playing an all-lineman team. And so when there was a touchback, I thought, we're not going to win this anyway. Let's give it to the tree. It'll be funny. And then the tree rooted immediately. So we just kept the ball on the tree for a while. And now on turn 16, we're going to see if we can do something unlikely. Oh, my God. Well, that might actually give us a chance. That might actually give us a chance. So we're one rush away from the end zone. And pretty much all we need to do is to just get this out of the way. I say just, we still don't have any rerolls, but we throw the dice, we roll a pow, that's good. If we draw this game, it's going to be one of the most miraculous draws I've ever had. It's a two plus. It'll either work or it won't. It worked. Oh my God. <gasps> Scandalous draw. Absolutely outrageous. I mean, until they get a timeout or something, but... <laughs> 
turns out, okay, so I'm not going to pretend like this was some amazing plan, but it turns out giving it to the tree was kind of useful, right? Because the tree was the only place it was never going to get sacked. So we just held it on the tree until it was late in the half, and then we had a chance. Um, so yeah, tree kind of did its uh, did its thing there. Uh, how many players they got? I mean, they definitely can one ten because they got movement seven. They've got a reroll, so we're we're not out of the woods yet. I'll make two lines, we might as well make the one line harder to go through. I don't understand why we don't do tree carry more often. Um, movement to and routing. Giga brain tree knowing how to use a tree. I've got the plays. We're not out of the woods. They are not trying for a one turn, so please don't time out. Not a timeout. They can get two SVP for a pass. I cannot believe we've drawn this game. <laughs> I'm quite proud of myself for sticking at it in my messy way. I absolutely cannot believe we've got away with it. New owners don't have a full plan yet, but the new factory in the UK will be in Orpington. I've heard of Orpington. I have like a vague sense of knowing what Orpington is, but I'm not very sure. Oh, and another dead player. Sorry, Raven. Raven and Chris Froz in both departing. We've had three deaths this game. This one, the Apo saved and turned into an MNG, which is the most important one because it's the war dancer. But we've had four in, four in, no, three injuries in total, and all of them started at death. It's quite bad. <laughs> it's quite a bad set of casualty rolls. <laughs> And turn 16 foul because they're spiteful. Well, get stuffed. You drew with a team that had no reason to have a chance. That's what I say to spite fowlers. Oh, lovely MVP on Zach as well. Very nice. So, roster's looking a bit skinny. We're playing with one more dancer again next game, which is a bummer. But we did make enough money to buy the second reroll, which people do. I wouldn't mind buying another catcher, but I think at this point the reroll is next um, because one reroll really stinks, um, as we saw in that first half. So, get that reroll and let's go and see our blood pass. We've got some new dice. Oh no, we don't. We've got a witch shelf thing. Actually, maybe quite a cool witch shelf thing, actually, compared to some of the ones you get. It's a nice spiky arm bit. I feel like that will actually stand out a bit. I like it. It looks like feathers. Oh, we've got a few new bits. And we've got all oh, we've got new war dance clothes. We'll go check those out. We haven't got the new dice yet. They're next. So we're nearly at the end of the blood pass this season already. Uh, selling tree shells. So let's go see what our new war dance look is like. The thing is we paid for this. We paid some warp stone for this cosmetic look. Maybe we'll do one in each.
Yeah, we paid for furtive. Do you know what? This one is cooler though. Collie, since it's you, would you rather wear furtive or frozen leaf of a frozen leaf of a till a till with? Atilwith. Atilwith. I'm going with Atilwith. Frozen leaf of Atilwith. Frozen. Oh, second one. Yeah, I think it looks cooler, doesn't it? You look quite buff, to be honest. Like, basic boring war dancer. Stupid sexy war dancer. I actually, I do like some of the cosmetics. I think that one's quite good. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Well, Collie sent me a game off anyway. Uh, what are we doing with the catches? So my plan with the catches last time was try to rush one to movement up, except then I never actually managed to get it to movement up. Um, I think the other approaches you can take with the catches are block and then random agility skills or second option, just go straight to random agility skills. And I don't know which of those I prefer. Like the nice thing about doing random agility skills is that if you hit um, sidestep, sure feet or sprint, then you just know that that's going to be your one turn and you start building it accordingly. Um, what are the other random agility skills? Diving tackle, that's okay. You'd probably add block and sidestep and turn it into a, a cage annoying piece. Leap is a bit disappointing, but could work on a one turner. Sneaky get. It gives you a pretty clear path on what to do with it. Although I don't love doing that path with catches because you can do it on Lima with what else. Um, defensive is a, probably a bit of a waste because they're strength two, so it's just not as good. Safe pair of hands is not great. Sprint, again, the one turn option. Diving catch. Diving catch is fine for 10k on them, I think. Um, makes them, kind of does the same thing as nerves of steel on them, basically, because if it just means if they're in a tackle zone, they're still going to catch on a two plus. Jump up, again, is just kind of fine, but doesn't really lead you anywhere. And yeah, the last two, again, are good for the one turn. Um, yeah, I think the thing is, Andy, though, like, is it worth doing the random agility skill first? Because if you get the cheap sized it, then that's going to be your one turn. And it'll be a bit cheaper. Um, but there are a few misses here, and I haven't really got any team value um, I haven't really got any cash to spare because I've got a load of things I need to buy. So I don't really want to random it and get something I really don't want, like safe pair of hands or defensive. So I'm I'm a bit torn. I don't hate giving the first one just block because blodge is really nice at low TV. If, if this was a normal team and I wasn't worried about the eventual CV cap, I'd give it block. So why don't I give it block? And we'll do the next one we'll do randoms into. I think that's the way to do it because I think having one blodge catcher, especially since we seem to play most games with one more dancer, I think having one with blodge is going to do us some good. Because we, yeah, we're playing like every game with one more dancer, so having a blodge catcher, I think, will help us. All right, uh, Krakatoa kid. I said I was going to do the first lineman who got here. I was going to choose wrestle because I found I really missed wrestle in the last run. And we'll random, we'll random subsequent linemen. But the first one, I think I'm paying for wrestle, even if I fire it later, because I just wrestles a really nice skill on wood elves, and I, I missed having it last time. So that's what we're going to do. Um, next game will still only be like just because we're down a war answer, we'll still only be just over a million. So I think that's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> 